After six months of suffering from chronic fatigue, 14-year-old soccer player Brittany Goff barely has the energy to make it off the couch. Now, after running a battery of blood tests, Brittany's doctor thinks he has uncovered a reason for her mysterious symptoms. He told me that something did come back on my blood work, and he told me that I have a disease called hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis is a genetic condition which causes the body to absorb too much iron from food. As a result, patients commonly suffer from extreme fatigue. The doctor explained to us, usually in your mid-40s, you start having symptoms, that she was very young to be showing this. I did think it was unusual that she was showing symptoms that someone in their 40s would. Brittany is put on a treatment program to remove excess iron from her blood. By her junior year, Brittany's constant fatigue is wearing her down, and her dreams of a normal high school life begin slipping away. Weekends, all my friends would go out and hang out, but I would just stayed home, just wanting to go to bed early and sleep. I wanted anything in the world just to be a normal teenager. Her levels of iron were coming down in her blood, and she was still tired as she ever was. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. My health started getting so bad. I had to quit soccer. It was just heartbreaking to me having to quit the sport that I absolutely loved. I just felt like I was being robbed of my life. Patty continues to search for reasons for her daughter's health problems. Every doctor wanted to blame it back on her, that she was making this up and that she was doing this for attention. I was torn. I wasn't sure if this was real symptoms or if they were in her head. I was scared that my child had a mental illness. I wasn't really sure of anything anymore. I was really hurt that nobody would believe me, but I knew that I wasn't crazy. I knew that I wasn't making these symptoms up. I knew that something was wrong with me. Over the course of the next two years, Brittany trudges through high school, barely managing to graduate. In the fall, the 18-year-old enrolls in a local community college. My alarm went off for class one morning, and my entire body just felt like I had been hit by a truck. It was like a sharp joint pain in my entire body. It was the most awful feeling I've ever experienced in my life. I was in tears crying. I had to call my mom to come and get me. I had never seen Brittany in that much pain. She was sobbing and crying, and crying to me like a little girl how bad she hurt. That was a terrifying moment for me, and I realized that I had to find out what was wrong with her. Patty immediately schedules an appointment with a new physician. She sat with us and listened to Brittany's entire story. After listening, she said she might have a few ideas, then she wanted to do some blood work. I was so desperate to just finding an answer. It just felt like my world was falling apart. Four days later, Brittany returns to the doctor's office for the results. My doctor told me she had some news. I had tested positive for Lyme disease. Lyme disease is caused by the bacterium Borrelia burgdorferi. Inside Brittany's body, the bacteria has traveled through the bloodstream and settled in the tissue surrounding the joints. Now, her immune system is continually attacking the bacteria, producing a series of chemical reactions that result in joint pain and extreme fatigue. I was really scared. I'd heard horror stories of people being crippled from Lyme disease. I was very worried about what her future looked like with these type of symptoms. Brittany's doctor prescribes a three-week course of antibiotics. After I completed my three-week course of antibiotics, I felt worse. I was really confused, and I had no idea why it was happening. For the next two years, Brittany is in and out of doctor's offices in a desperate search for help. But her condition only deteriorates. I ended up having to drop out of school because I just wasn't capable of even getting up and going to class. I felt like 
a 20-year-old trapped inside a 90-year-old's body. I could just slowly feel myself dying each day. She was just sitting at home, wrapped up in a blanket. It was almost like living with a shell of a person. She just wasn't there. It's the most painful thing to watch your own child suffer. At the end of her rope, Brittany makes a last ditch appointment with Dr. Daniel Joller. Her symptoms were compatible with a diagnosis of chronic Lyme disease. But I began to suspect there might be something else going on in addition to Lyme disease. Dr. Joller orders a series of blood tests to confirm his hunch. One month later, Brittany and Patty get the results. Brittany's test results it showed that not only did she have persistent Lyme disease, but also confirmed that she was suffering also from babesiosis. I had never heard of babesiosis before in my life. I was completely shocked. Babesiosis is caused by a protozoan parasite called Babesia microti. When a person's infected, the parasite targets red blood cells, which transport oxygen throughout the body, and that can cause numerous problems for the host. Inside Brittany's bloodstream, the Babesia parasites continue to invade red blood cells where they feed and reproduce. Eventually, the parasites destroy the red blood cells, flooding the body with their offspring. As the Babesia parasites wipe out the cells, Brittany's oxygen levels decrease, resulting in extreme fatigue. It was very frightening and scary to know that I've had a parasite living in my body for the past eight years, and I didn't even know it. In many cases, those infected don't experience any symptoms because their spleen is able to remove the infected cells from the blood. But when the body's immune system is compromised by another condition such as Lyme disease, the spleen can become overworked and the Babesia parasite takes hold. If that happens, the consequences can be dire. The main fear that I had was that I was gonna die because it can greatly affect you and kill you if you have a compromised immune system, which I had because I had Lyme disease that wasn't treated for so long. I was very scared. I was just concerned with what the treatment was, how long would it take, uh, would she be better, would she be worse? Dr. Joller prescribes a course of long-term antibiotic and antiparasitic medications to rid Brittany's body of foreign organisms. But as she begins her recovery, Brittany's haunted by one question. How did she become infected in the first place? Babesia parasites and Lyme disease bacteria are often found in the salivary glands of deer ticks. When an infected tick bites a human, both the parasite and the bacteria can enter the bloodstream and infect the host. I started thinking back and remembered the deer tick that I pulled off of her when she was about six years old. After my mom picked the deer tick off of me, a few days later, I got a huge bullseye rash on me. So my mom took me to the doctor, and they put me on a short course of antibiotics, and everything was fine after that. Doctors think that this is how Brittany contracted the diseases. Both babesiosis and Lyme disease can lie dormant for several years after a person has become infected. In these cases, the onset of symptoms can be triggered by a range of factors, including stress, trauma, or other illnesses. With the cause of her daughter's chronic illness now clear, Patty reflects on the years of uncertainty. When I look back at Brittany's entire childhood, I have a lot of guilt for feeling the feelings that I had that maybe it was in her head. It was hard for me to come to grips with knowing that my child was in such pain and there were times that I didn't have compassion for her. <laughs>